so I had this friend, and um, she was an internet friend. Like, we only knew each other from social media. And she reached out to me one day, and she said that she was planning on killing herself. Mm. And, like, at the time, I really didn't even know, like, what that even meant. It's hard to believe that pop musician Whitney Wurz is only 18 years old. Her single, Love Me Not, has gotten almost 45 million views on YouTube, and she's already toured with artists like Jesse McCartney and Jason Mraz. But it was her efforts to help a friend in need and her work as a mental health advocate that made me aware of this special young woman. Whitney joins us on this episode of Inner Space to talk about her own inner space and the work she is proud to do to help others. I'm here today in New York City with Whitney Wurz, who is a singer, songwriter, and a mental health advocate. Uh, thank you, Whitney, for taking the time out of your busy day. It sounds like it's a very busy day today. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, uh, I want to start with talking about uh, your, your craft, your artistry. You know, tell me a little bit about your, um, your aspirations, what you're working on now. Obviously, you have some music that's out in the world and getting a lot of attention. Congratulations for that. Thank you. <laughs> so give me a little bit of background. Like, when did, when did your passion begin for performing? And, and we were just talking about the songwriting that you do, too, which I want to get into a little bit about that. But give us a little background. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so basically, I started um, singing when I was in elementary school, and I started doing musical theater at like my local high school in Connecticut, where I grew up. And after my first performance, I literally knew that that's what I wanted to do with my life. And it was, I think I was like nine. And I still remember that feeling of, I want to perform. And then I started writing music um, when I was 12, I think. Hmm. And like, I might as well, I'll, I'll go into like how I wrote my first mm -hmm. song, which also ties into how I became involved with mental health. Um, so I had this friend, and um, she was an internet friend. Like, we only knew each other from social media. And she reached out to me one day, and she said that she was planning on killing herself. Mm. And like, at the time, I really didn't even know like what that even meant. And so I found Bring Change to Mind, and um, I didn't even know about Suicide Hotline. They told me to call Suicide Hotline. Good for you. So I called Suicide Hotline, um, got her address, and um, within that time period between like when help like arrived and when I called, like I just sat down and I wrote this poem that mm. I turned into a song, and um, then I just I recorded a rough little version of it and sent it to her um, when I knew oh. that she was okay and safe. And then the response was that like I I saved her life, wow. and that inspired her. That song inspired her to get therapy and to get help. And that's wow. that's very <laughs> that's really, powerful. I know, and that's very um, cool. she's still alive today, and she's like. I think six years clean of cutting. Mm -hmm. And we talk every day now, still. And mm. um, that song really got me like started and let me get that message out there. You know, once I helped one person, I figured I could help so many more. Mm -hmm. So I got involved with Bring Change to Mind. I'm now a teen ambassador with them. And um, that song is like, has saved so many people's lives. And it's just, it's still, <laughs> it's like, it, I'm in awe. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it says a lot about you and your your empathy and your your willingness to do something with it. I want to go back to the the performing part of you. And you said, you know, you knew then you did that first musical theater and you were hooked. Yep. And you, I want to do this. What is it about the performing, um, the creativity that that feeds you that is so powerful for you? You know, it's like it's very hard to describe. Actually, it's like this feeling that um, it's just pure happiness huh. and like when I'm on a stage and my people are you can I can see that they're into whatever I'm doing and like it's resonating with them and they're listening uh, especially to when I sing like my songs mm -hmm. and people are listening to my lyrics it's just it's just exactly what I want because my goal really is to have as many people hear my music as possible and to inspire as many people as I can and playing like the lyrics that I've that are so close to me um, like to an audience is it's like surreal. It's mm. awesome. Um, it sounds like your your songs are uh, come from a very deep place in you. They're very personal. They have a lot of meaning. Uh, it doesn't sound like you do a whole lot of fluff. This stuff that's like you know irrelevant. So mm -hmm. talk a little bit about that. About what the the process is like for you when an idea comes to you. Tell us about the the process. Yeah. So all my songs come from like a feeling or something that I see or something that happens to me personally. And then I'll like, 
get this random lyric in my head. Hmm. And it always starts from just like one lyric and I'll either write it down on my phone if I'm out or I have this special songwriting notebook and I'll write it down. And then um, usually at night, then I'll like finish it, Hmm. usually my songwriting notebook and I'll just, it just kind of pours out like Uh that one feeling or that one experience just comes out onto the page using like poetic metaphor, I'd say. And um, like sometimes like, like the next morning, I won't even, I'll read it again. I'm like, wow, I don't even remember writing this because like it's like so in the moment. And then I'm like, wow, okay. And then. Um, it almost sounds like it writes itself. Sometimes, yeah, it, yeah, almost. Not, um, a lot of, not a lot of hard work to fit it together. It almost sounds like it literally. It does, it's a flow. Yeah. Like once I get into that, it's, it's there, it's on, it's on the page. And then I put melody underneath it and um, I just have this whole file of like hundreds of songs just saved that Someday. Nobody has heard before. Yeah, but someday, right? Yeah, they, they'll be exactly. out there. Uh-huh. Do you think that the the clearly this song that you that you wrote that was inspired by this near tragedy uh, that saved this this young woman um, clearly that was something that saved her. Do your songs are they helpful to you? Are they good for your emotional well being? And if so, how? Um, it's very interesting you mention that because like a week ago. Um, uh, like, I was like, I want to revisit that song. It's called Ghost Story, because I was feeling down. So I played the video, um, and this video is, it was a music video slash documentary, and it has six different um, teens in it, all with real stories about what they are going through. And so I watched it again, and I was like, wow, like, because I haven't seen that in um, a while. And um, just writing in general is kind of like, therapy in itself because I get to just express what I'm feeling onto the page and that it helps me. Is your family musical? Do you come from a family that is creative, musical, or something in the yeah, in the yeah. artistic space? My dad um, used to be in a band in huh. college <laughs> and so and he loves um, like what I'm doing mm-hmm. and uh, playing the piano and my mom can't sing or do anything but she's very very supportive. Um, it's important. Yeah mm-hmm. c- totally um, and my brother um, also, he produces and he sings and acts, huh. so mainly my brother and I are the musical ones. Huh. Yeah. And you, you said your mom and dad both, obviously they're supportive, which is, I would assume, very, very important. Do you, do you feel that? I mean, again, sort of thinking about emotional health and well-being, because I know there are a lot of artists who have to overcome their family's um, reluctance or Mm -hmm. concern about their choice of of going into um, the entertainment world and you have it sounds like your parents are they're they're supporting this this passion you have yeah since day one they would take me to all the auditions for like all the musicals and um, I also do acting like aside from singing so we take me to those auditions and they come to as many shows as they can Mm -hmm. and they're extremely 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 supportive Mm -hmm. which is so great and I wish that everybody who wanted to pursue the arts could have parents like mine. Mm-hmm. Well it's, it is, it's a, clearly a gift and it allows you to, to find your way in yeah. this what can be a very challenging industry and we'll talk about that in mm-hmm. a little bit. I want to shift gears slightly and talk about um, Bring Change to Mind, the work that you've done. Bring Change to Mind for our listeners who don't know is the organization that Glenn Close started. Mm-hmm. I have. Have the have had the honor of working with Glenn myself in this in the mental health space, mm-hmm. and um, you said that you're an ambassador. What does that mean, and what do you do? Um, basically, I try to talk about the organization as much as I can, and um, like if somebody people like know what I do, and so like they'll come to me with any sort of issue that they're having, and I will lead them right to Bring Changed Mind, mm-hmm. and I'll say like, and I can also lead them to. Ghost Story, which is the song, and Ghost Story was their PSA song for a while. Mm. Um, and yeah, I can lead them to exactly what they need to do. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm actually working on starting a um, program at my high school, um, Let's Spring Change to Mind, is their like teen portion. Mm-hmm. And so I'm working to start that at my high school, and so we, everybody can have a safe space to talk about things that people don't talk about. Why, why is that important to you? Because, well, <laughs> for so many different reasons. Um, one, um, like I am working through depression and anxiety and I feel like it's been almost 
glorified in the last few years, mm -hmm. and I. What does that mean? What do you say? Well, I feel like it's <laughs> it's it's kind of sad because, um, pe especially on social media, a lot of um, like people are just throwing out the phrase, "I'm going to kill myself," mm -hmm. or like, "I'm so depressed." But really, like, like, uh, are you in people who really? do you feel like these things, it's almost, it almost gets like brushed over. Mm -hmm. And I see that and it's like, ah, like it's really pushing aside the fact that your joke is real. Mm -hmm. And so in like my school, um, if, you, if you talk about like one of the issues, it's, it's, it's almost like it doesn't actually matter. Huh. So I want it to so, matter. So let me see if I understand, because this is I think a really important point. So we've all been working and encouraging people to talk more openly about these things and you're saying that what you see is sometimes people throwing the terms around and what it, what effect does that have then it's like it's almost it's just another phrase and uh. then it doesn't really mean what it should mean mm -hmm. it's it almost becomes it's just it should be this important and then it, it kind of comes down here. Mm -hmm. And it's, I see that so often on social media huh. and just like people posting like and just and what it's, do people uh, do in response to that? Like if somebody posts that, what happens? Nothing. Nothing. Or it's like maybe an LOL. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. And so it sounds like your passion is to make it more real, mm -hmm. to make it more authentic. And yeah. that, my guess is that ties back to your music, mm -hmm. that that's what that's about. And that it sounds like you see when, when you're performing, people are resonating because of that. Yeah. Is that, am I, do I have that right? Totally, totally. It's a huge concern right now, um, suicide mm -hmm. in our country. You may know that the, we uh, just got a report in the last few months from the CDC, Center for Disease, um, that indicates that suicide is, is increased in our country yeah. and that one of the populations, that one of the groups within the larger population that we're most concerned about is young girls teens, preteens mm -hmm. and teens. What do you think about that? What do you think is, is, I mean, just from your perspective as a young woman sort of coming out of that time of life, looking back, what do you think that's about? I think it also ties back to social media because, it, you know, people are starting to use Instagram and Snapchat at a very, very, very young age. And they see, well, people only put out on social media what they want people yes. to see, like the happiest best looking, right. maybe even edited pictures <laughs> of yourself doing the best things. But that's only like a second of people's lives. And I feel like people, especially young girls, get jealous or think, wait, why don't I look like that? Mm -hmm. um, why aren't I doing that cool thing? Like, these, this is what happy is, but like, I, this is not what I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, how can I be this this almost it's like a fake reality mm -hmm. um, and it sounds like you think it's dangerous it's destructive it's bit, yeah yeah because mm -hmm. it's not really real mm -hmm. and even I'm like almost a hypocrite of that because I mean as an artist like I have to you know put out and I like putting out all the, the shows that I'm doing or like the great um, like you know uh, the, the cool pictures the, yeah, yeah, the performance yeah. but I never put out the side of like wow like today was a really rough day mm. or like this is what I'm dealing with or what I'm feeling. Um, do you and think it's safe to do that? Oh yeah, totally. It's okay and to do I'm that? I'm going to start and I have started like putting, actually I've been doing that for a while, but I'm mm. um, putting out like the real side of mm -hmm. me and I want um, more people to, to do that. Talk about your generation uh, and obviously you can't talk for all of you, <laughs> <laughs> um, but Talk about, if you would, um, the other sort of scary thing right now for your generation is the opioid epidemic. And each generation faces the challenge of how do we deal with this experimentation versus, you know, taking our life in our own hands. Mm -hmm. what do you, when you look around, again, your slice of your generation, what do you see? Where do you think the, where are we going? Is it positive? Is it negative? Is it a mixture? What do you think? Um, it's, it's sad because people are turning to drugs and alcohol when they're, they're, they're feeling sad instead mm -hmm. of really dealing with it, with it head on. And like it's, they actually, like drugs and alcohol are, are depressants. Mm -hmm. And you might not feel that like in the moment, but it's really, it's affecting a lot, a lot of people. And um, again, right back to social media, um, a mm -hmm. bunch of artists and especially like rappers, like are, you know, broadcasting um, their use. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like, 
It's promoting and, it. Yeah, it's almost promoting it. And kids, younger kids even, are seeing this and be like, oh, that's what I'm supposed to do when I'm a teenager. Mm -hmm. Or like, oh, this person does it. They're really cool. I love their music, so I'm going to do it too. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's, like it's really sad. like the vaping, sad. right? Yeah. The vaping has mm -hmm. become a thing that now is seen as it's cool. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, so, so back to the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What do you think of the, the health, emotional health and well-being for young artists coming into the industry? What have you experienced? What have you seen? What are your concerns? How do you view this industry that you're now a part of? Yeah, um, I think it's, it has a lot of positives and also like those underlying negatives. But the negatives, again, we don't see. And so um, it ties back to, you know, they put on the happy face of social media. And um, I feel like a lot of artists I think should should talk about like what they're really feeling um, but it is it's I think it's all good and you talked about sort of your music as, as something that is really soothing for you it, it takes care of you the writing is a very positive mm -hmm. therapeutic are there other things that are really really important that you have learned that you do to take care of your inner space yeah um, well I started going to therapy and I think that like everybody should have a therapist. Mm -hmm. And that is one thing that hasn't been like glorified is like a therapist. Mm -hmm. I don't usually talk about it um, because there is a stigma around it. And like, I mean, I've been trying to, um, but talking about like what you're feeling like to a professional is, I mean, she's been changing my life mm. and it's so great. And so like whenever I go, it's just, that's, it helps me so much. Mm. Mm. I feel I'm, like everybody needs a therapist, even I, if they're not like dealing with any well, mental it's, illness. It's interesting, right? Because it's it's so cool to hear you talk about your experience. And so how do we, and that's part of what this show is about, is inviting people like you and others to tell their stories, to inspire people, to inspire listeners, to think about what can be helpful for them. Um, you know, and I think today you're sharing how writing is really therapeutic, useful. I think probably a lot of people listening may have things in their head that they probably don't trust that they should share them, even to themselves, even write it down. But it sounds like one of your messages is how powerful that can be. Totally, and it doesn't even have to be lyrics. Like sometimes I'll just journal my day mm -hmm. and it's just a, a rant almost. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes we need to rant, yeah. right? We need to dump that out there. So do you ever worry, and, and I don't mean worry like in a heavy way, but let's say you make it big. Let's say you break through, and if, because that's something that you wish, I wish that for you too. We know and we have seen in the world that that can come with a bit of a backlash. Mm -hmm. um, do you think about that? Like how to make I, sure that if you get there, that doesn't happen to you? I do, I think about it, um, not constantly, but I definitely think about it and like, I um, I think I respect myself like too much to let myself be like influenced by you know everything um, and I will I have like a good supports team and everything to keep me grounded but I'm honestly I'm not worried because my goal actually my goal isn't fame it's just to inspire as many people as I can and um, if fame comes with that then so be it mm -hmm. um, but I feel like with the people around me and like with myself like I can keep I can keep very grounded because like well, I don't want to why would I want to change mm -hmm. you talked about some of the things that concern you the social media space the whole FOMO thing when you were talking about that it's like that didn't even used to be a thing and now it's a thing yeah um, and when we think about how we meaning again the collective we how we can reach your generation effectively with healthy messages and invitations to be more authentic what do you see out there that's working? What do you think we need to do more of? Mm. Um, what's working is music. Mm -hmm. I think that, and even myself included, go to lyrics and to songs to like relate to and let like us know that we're not alone. And that's like what I do, like how I write. I want people to see that they're not alone through my lyrics. So that's something that's really helping. I think music really, really helps people. Um, and we're also doing, we are doing a good job of making, like ending the stigma. Mm -hmm. Like totally, that's, we're doing a really, really good job you about that. You think it's getting through? It's a, that these issues are real? Definitely, it's definitely. It's not somebody's fault? You think people your generation are kind of getting that? We are totally getting it. Um, and it's really good. The only 
of course, the only negative is the um, overusing of like some mm -hmm. of like the words. Um, and what we could do better, I think, is talking about it real mm -hmm. and um, going a deeper level. Going right? one more, yeah, deeper mm -hmm. level, and just bringing it up, like as just talking, mm -hmm. just talking. It really comes down to talking about just it. Just talking about mm -hmm. it. Well, it has been delightful to talk to you. Well, thank you. Thank you. you, as well. you thank you for um, coming on Inner Space to talk to me about your perspective and your goal and your vision. And I wish you great luck in the future. And when we're back around here in the same space, I hope you come back yeah. and tell us how things are going down the road. Totally. Thank All you right. so much. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Inner Space. And of course, a special thank you to Whitney for sitting down to share her story with me. Check out DCP Entertainment for more information about Inner Space and be on the lookout for more episodes.